Welcome to the Moms Making Six Figures podcast, where it's all about real women, real stories, real inspiration. And now your host and creator of Moms Making Six Figures, Heidi Bartolotta. So first of all, thank you for doing this. Thank you for taking the time to do this interview. I appreciate it. Oh, really, it's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. So will you, will you talk a little bit about your professional background? Tell us a little bit about how you came up and where you are now and just a little bit about your journey in that. Sure. My journey's long, um, so I'll try to make this succinct. But I um, had originally started going to college to be an athletic trainer. And at the time when I was going, I had this grand plan that I was going to work for an NFL team and I was going to be that person that ran out onto the field um, when an athlete got hurt. And just about the time I was finishing college, um, I was slapped in the face with the fact that I was female and females were not allowed to work in the NFL at the time um, in that role. Um, And so I went back and I said, you know, I really have this love of sports and I, I would love to do that. And this wasn't a reality for me. Um, And so I got an MBA and decided to go to the sports marketing side of the world um, and worked in professional sports in the sales and marketing side for about 10 years, um, working on what we would call touring sports. So golf, tennis, um, eventually CrossFit, marathons, triathlons, things of that nature. Loved every moment of it. Um, it. And it's a reality uh, one day when the the Delta counter lady says, oh, I haven't seen you in two weeks. Have you been okay? And you go, have I really traveled that much? (laughs) Have my family really missed out on me that much? And I decided that was about time to to take a step back. Um, And at the time, my dad had prostate cancer. And so um, he was graduating from his... um, um, therapy treatments in radiation. And one of the board members came to me and said, Jess, have you ever thought about getting into fundraising? And I said, no, not really. And she said, well, you've had a pretty successful career in sales and marketing in the, in the professional sports world. Maybe you want to give back to um, the group that, that saved your dad's life. And so I said, well, okay, yes. Um, And so I applied, didn't get the job that she was originally referencing and ended up going to work for the hospital that was associated with the cancer center Um, and got into nonprofit fundraising um, and have spent, oh geez, now it's probably been five years working in the nonprofit side of healthcare. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Isn't it interesting, I think, for so many women, those um, kind of roadblocks that happen at different times in our career change our path completely. And I'm guessing that um, now you sound like you love every step of your journey, right? And I would say I'm where I'm meant to be now. Mm -hmm. Um, So I I loved working in professional sports, but it was not a long-term career for me. Mm -hmm. Um, And knowing that I can now kind of take some of what I learned there and apply it to what really is more meaningful work for me, it has really been a blessing. Fills your soul. It does. It sure does. Yeah. It sounds like it. Yes. So those, those roadblocks, the, the path, I think, for a lot of younger women that are listening that are maybe coming up against something very similar to what you did only in a different arena, maybe, mm-hmm. what do you think um, are some of the traits that helped you to look at that, see it as something that wasn't a complete stop, but, oh, I'm going to go this direction? Yeah, so I think some of those roadblocks at the time seem like boulders, right? And they just block our path, and you're thinking there's no way out, um, and so I just have to turn around and go go backwards. Mm -hmm. Um, And instead, I would say, let's take a look at those maybe as, as just potholes. Right, something that you can navigate around, that. something that um, maybe isn't quite what you anticipated, but really is for kind of that that bigger and more meaningful step around, um, and not something that we need to retreat away from, but but kind of embrace and, and just move around in a little bit of a different manner. Mm-hmm. Look at it differently. Absolutely, yeah, um, and, and probably one that's you know. At the time, it feels like like your world's crumbling and your world's coming right. to an end. Right. Um, and having some 
some people around you to, to lift you up is also helpful. Um, mm -hmm. And that we don't get so totally stuck in that I'm not progressing forward in this manner, but having a mentor or somebody like that that can help you kind of navigate around that and see the light at the end of the tunnel <laughs> um, is certainly helpful. Yeah. Mentors have come into, I think, almost every podcast that I've done with women, mentors and your perspective in the way that you view it always comes in. Absolutely. In a little bit of a different way in each journey. It's really the lessons are different, but the things that come out of them are so similar. So let's take a little bit of a different turn. Mm -hmm. So you are, you recently became a mother. That's true. So nine, recently, nine weeks recently. Nine weeks. Yeah. <laughs> so you're a little bit different in that you have built this incredible career before children. Mm -hmm. And so you probably have a really unique perspective looking at all of the things that you're navigating right now with a nine week old and you look fabulous. <laughs> Thank so, you. <laughs> so talk a little bit about that. Yeah. And I would say it wasn't my plan, right? It's never our plan. <laughs> um, my plan wasn't let's have this grand, grand career and then we can think about motherhood. Mm -hmm. um, and so I've been with my husband for 10 years. Um, and so it just took us a little bit longer um, to have to have that little one. Um, but in the beginning, it truly was, you know, I wasn't ready to be a mom. I wasn't ready to put myself second. Mm -hmm. um, and I think so many times as mothers, we, we think about that we have to put ourselves second to our children. Um, and so I would say that's probably what I look at differently as a mom with a career mm -hmm. is I don't have to put myself second, nor do I have to put my child second. We can we can kind of walk this path together mm -hmm. um, and, and he can really fit in um, in a way that probably I, I wouldn't have thought about five years ago. Um, but I can still have a career. I can still be a mom and I can be great at both. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I, th I think that's the unique aspect of being maybe an, uh, what some would consider an older mom. <laughs> um, and, and one that I've, I've really started to embrace is, is how to manage both at the same time. You have a lot of wisdom going into it. I Thank was told <laughs> a story about you that okay. you were on a board meeting on zoom, which is so common now with him on your hip. That is true. Um, and, and maybe not even not just on my hip, but you know, sometimes to keep them quiet, you have to do things. And, and so you just tilt the camera up a little bit um, <laughs> and do what you need to do. Um, but it really was one of those. I was on this call. My husband was in the background. The baby was crying and he's like, help, help. Like, okay. So I turned the camera off take the baby from him, put the baby on my lap, turn the camera back on, tilt the camera up just a little bit. And we, we kind of continued <laughs> on with, <laughs> with the meeting as, as we were going. And, and I was leading the meeting. So I was, I was chairman of the board. Um, and it, it, you know, I, I don't think anybody was the wiser. Um, I did tell a couple of people afterwards, they're like, I had no idea. I'm like, yeah, well, you just keep rolling with it. <laughs> but I think it's so fantastic to show, I think your confidence in, okay, I'm just going to handle this. Like this is, this is where I am and this is what's going to happen. And I think a younger mom that's a little bit more tentative maybe would not have handled it in the same way, right? So, well, and I think my younger me would not have handled it in that way. It probably would have been like, get, you, you just do what you need to do. I'm busy here. Right. And instead it was, uh, you know what? Okay. And, and I will tell you, it wasn't um, my own wisdom. It was, it was wisdom that I had from a friend of mine. And she said, I just want you to know as you're going to become a new mom, it's okay, right? It's okay for people to know that you're a mom. It's mm -hmm. okay for people to know that you have kids. And maybe that's what the pandemic has done for us, right? Mm -hmm. Is it's allowed us to be a little bit more open into our own personal lives inside our professional lives. And so it was just that moment that I said, you know what? If people know that I have a baby, they know that I have a baby, right? <laughs> there we go. <laughs> that's it. So cool. So what am I not asking? T tell me something in your story that I haven't asked that you think for our listeners, so we have a lot of women that are aspiring to that six-figure mark mm -hmm. and a lot of women that are kind of counterparts to you that are there but are, you know, navigating. Mm -hmm. What do you think would be impactful? 
So I think so many times um, as women, we feel that maybe we're not worthy of six figures. Mm -hmm. um, and I would tell you to break away from that mold, right? Just because, and it sounds so cliche nowadays, right? Because a man can do it, a woman can do it, but it's so true. Like I think so many times we feel like we either have to choose motherhood or we have to choose a career mm -hmm. or we have to choose a career that is maybe lesser because I want to choose motherhood at the same time. Um, and I think you can still have that six figure income. You can still be that six figure leader while being a mother. Um, and, and I think that's important. I think it's also important to know, you know, it's okay to be the breadwinner in your family. Um, and, and that is something that, you know, takes a special partner, I will say. Um, but, but to strive that that is your ultimate goal, um, is, is a good thing. Um, and it's something that I wouldn't have thought about me 20 years ago. And I would have said, you know, I'm going to take the more traditional route of, I would be the wife and the mother and, and the one that's, I hate the word, but submissive to my husband. Mm -hmm. Um, and instead it's a, this is a partnership and we're in this together and I can have a career and I am, I am worthy of six figures. Mm -hmm. um, and so many times I feel like as women, we're, we don't think of ourselves as worthy of, of attaining that level. Yeah, such a great point. So do you remember when you hit six figures? I do. Um, and it was when I was working in professional sports and I was working um, in sales with, with CrossFit. And this is before anybody knew what CrossFit was. So, mm -hmm. so thinking that we're in probably the 2010, 2011 timeframe. Um, and I remember when I, I got that commission check, cause that's, that's the, the role that I was in and I looked at it and I knew what that meant to my salary. Mm -hmm. Um, and at the time I just thought, man, I'm really lucky. Um, and what I think about now is I wasn't lucky. I worked really hard for that. Like I worked really, really, really hard for that. And at the time I wish, I wish I could go back and tell that me, mm -hmm. um, that you are worthy and that you worked hard for this. You weren't lucky. Nobody just gave it to you. You didn't just fall into it. You created relationships. You created a product that made you worthy of making six figures. So you got a little bit emotional. I did. That. I did. Did you see that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I think it's a really, really important point because I do think as women, a lot of times um, we say, oh, it's, we want, we want to give the credit to something other than us and what we've done and how hard we worked and what we had to learn in order to be there. Mm -hmm. So for someone that's younger, that's in that position where they're pushing to that mark right now. Um, you've said this, you are worthy. Talk a little bit more about that because that was something that really struck a chord with you. Yeah, and I think, you know, I would just say to, to all the women out there, you can be whatever you wanna be. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to fit into a perfect mold. Um, you, you can be female and you can work in professional sports. You can, do whatever it is that is that, that you dream of and and you control your own destiny. Um, and I think that's really kind of part of it is I worked in a man's world. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, that's, that's the reality of it is I worked in a man's world with a lot of men um, who maybe didn't see me in the same realm. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's what I would say to our women out there is one, let's be supportive of each other. Um, let's build each other up and not tear each other down um, and really strive for what it is that, that makes your soul go on fire. Um, and, and I think that's the important part. So good. Okay, so let's wrap this up. Book or podcast? Do you have, do you recommend, are there books or podcasts that you find yourself recommending on a regular basis? There are, and I'm a book girl. I like the turning of the pages. Uh -huh. I remember I traveled a lot, so I spent a lot of time on airplanes, um, and, and turning that page for me was something that I felt was just so uh, impactful. Right, mm -hmm. it felt like okay. I'm, I'm literally turning the page of a book, and I have two. Um, my first one that I love is by Rachel Hollis, and it's just a funny book, but it's "Girl, Wash Your Face." Right, mm -hmm. so get over yourself, yeah. <laughs> um, get over whatever it is that you're holding on to, and let's all move on. Right, so you don't have to be that social media perfect person. 
Um, because let's face it, we're not putting out there that my, my nine week old spit up on my shoulder. <laughs> we're showing the beautiful, perfect, perfectly put outfit that he's in. Right. Um, For like two and, seconds. Exactly. Until he spits up. <laughs> <laughs> so let's all wash our face and let's, uh, let's, let's show each other our realities, um, and know that we can, we can kind of do anything. And if people don't like it, fine, let's move on. Um, and the other one that I really love is called lead with heart. Um, and so it's a book about how to empower your team. Um, and really it's empowering your team by getting to know them. So you can be a leader while getting to know the personal life of those that you lead. And you can also allow those that you lead to know your personal life. So my team knows obviously about my child, um, but they knew a lot about me. They knew, you know, about my family, about my dogs, about my husband, about, um, and I think it's okay that we let them into that world and let them see that world because at so many points then they can associate with, oh, she has a dog and I have a dog, or um, she has a family and she's trying to navigate this while well, I try to navigate this with my family. And so I think when we when we allow that, that personal connection, we then can flourish our professional connection. And it allows you to be a much stronger mentor, which you obviously are when the intimacy is there. Right? Absolutely. And I, I will tell anybody, be a mentor. Mm-hmm. Um, not just that you have a mentor, but be a mentor because you get so much more back as the mentor than you do as being the mentee. Yeah. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. You for your time. Oh, this was fun. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Moms Making Six Figures podcast. If you enjoyed this podcast, please take a moment and leave a review on iTunes. To learn more about Moms Making Six Figures, head over to momsmakingsixfigures.com. That's right, momsmakingsixfigures.com. 